Welcome, welcome my friends to the Beggars and Brawlers podcast. This is episode 67, recorded Friday the 10th of February 2023. And today I have the highly talented Morgan Cole on to talk compelling characters, Star Wars prequels, and writing in the trenches. Bureaucrat by day, fantasy author by night, Morgan Cole began his writing career with several highly questionable life choices, such as a major in history and creative writing that was meant to lead to a glorious career as a fantasy author, but instead led to the world of unpaid internships, minimum wage jobs, and a dingy lightless apartment in small town Ohio. I can relate. (laughs) I suppose he supposes he took all of those motivational posters about shooting for the moon and landing among the stars far too seriously. Eventually, he decided to pursue an alternative career path that actually allows him to pay the rent and to write books on the side. Growing up, his father instilled in him a passion for ancient Greek and Roman history, especially all the battles, while his brother helped immerse him in the imaginative worlds of Morrowind and Middle-earth. All those influences are very present in his writing. Welcome to the podcast, Morgan. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Uh, I uh, I mentioned it to some of my newsletter followers, uh, but... I feel like, at least for me, I started off as your nemesis because our books were like really similar in the Amazon charts. And I was kind of like, who is this Morgan Cole character? (laughs) Uh, I feel like there's no, I mean, there's room for for, for more than one, you know. (laughs) There's definitely room for more than one. And then the more that I saw your book, the first book in the Chrysanthemum, I was like, this actually sounds really cool. (laughs) I'm going to try reading it. And I read it and I was like, Oh, okay. He can't be my nemesis because I actually like this book. So then well, I'm relieved. <laughs> I don't want to so, be your nemesis. <laughs> I mean, we can, you know, like it's, we can still call each other nemeses. Yeah. I mean, it I sounds think, cool. Yeah. Our books are not competing in the charts anymore because you're the first book in Chrysanthemum is still free. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Ooh, okay. For that's the foreseeable a, future. Oh man, that's amazing. So if you're listening to this, it is probably still free. There's a link in the liner notes. So you can read this excellent book for free, my friends, which is more than I can say for any of my books. So that's awesome. Um, Yeah. So uh, how did you, well, uh, let me ask you about some of these highly questionable life choices. (laughs) How did you, um, how did you end up getting serious about writing after having that initial stint and then like having to get a real job? Like what was your, what was your path to putting books out? So, I mean, the questionable life choice was, you know, going to college specifically with the idea of majoring in creative writing, and then from there, become an author with like no yeah. sort of plan for the in-between steps. I was a bit, yeah. you know, they talk about like the snowflakes or whatever. I guess I was a bit of one of those because I, I went in with not a really clear plan. Um, I I did major. Well, no, actually, I did not. I minored and then minoring in creative writing and majoring in yeah. history at a liberal arts college. And I all the classes were like about short stories. Right. And like, so yeah, totally. I even tried to do like a project that I, I got a project approved to like practice and learn about novel writing. Um, and it was like, that was the entire purpose of the project. But then I got there and the professor was like, you know, we don't have time to write a novel in a semester. So we're going to change it to guess what? Another short story. Uh, so I don't feel like it really stood me in, in great stead. I didn't know anything about pitching. I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know anything about like, yeah. what Mark people. Um, yeah. And then I just yeah. spent like a while trying to get published. And it took me like 10 years just to write the first book. That was by far the longest process because I wrote one draft and then I found out it was like there was a word count that you're supposed to have for like a debut novel. And it was <laughs> way over, over that. Uh, oh, it was over. And it needed to be cut in half. So then I cut it in half. Hmm. But originally, it was told from the perspective of two protagonists. Um, well, Wait, one of them the book that became Aurelia or something it is else? that one yeah that's okay. the one so that yeah. when I say my first novel I'm not including you know my I had other first novels before this yeah. one but they were they're terrible so they don't count unmentionable <laughs> unmentionable yeah one was like a Walking Dead ripoff I think nice uh, my first was Conan the Barbarian fan fiction you know oh, there like, you go start somewhere yeah exactly <laughs> um that's yeah, really so... funny that you uh that you majored in in creative writing because I tried to do the same thing at my not liberal arts college so I, I was an English major with a writing emphasis thinking oh, yeah. that there here I would learn to write my books etc and it was all literary criticism and yeah it was a lot of that write it instead of reading these like books that were important in their time and just suck now like I want to <laughs> read books that I like and write books that I like 
Yeah, I can empathize with that. I mean, we did a lot of critiquing of like short stories for like things like language and like, you know, it was very Symbolism. themes and themes, which I love. I love all those things, but there was no teaching of like how to, it's a very different beast writing a long book and especially a series yeah. and like knowing the market and all this stuff. Like, I feel like oh, it's yeah. like, half, it's only teaching you half of, so yeah, I, I, all that is to say, I, I think I understand where you're coming from with that. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to get through those trenches to like come out and appreciate the sunlight of like selling a few books. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Um, I got really lucky eventually after like a few years of, I, I, I had this idea that if I worked enough unpaid internships or at, at, like the types of things I was interested in, like nonprofits and stuff, I, I could eventually get a job there. Like, you know, they just hand it to you at the end of the internship, but oh, totally. uh, that didn't, that never happened, of course. Um, yeah. So then eventually I did finally, I, I, I actually ended up going to uh, a detention center in Texas, so all places where I'd never been before doing like, tra- at the time I spoke Spanish, for, for, I'd studied it in school, I was almost fluent. I'm oh, not sure I could say that anymore, but mm. I was doing like uh, translation interpretation for immigration lawyers working for people who were, had asylum claims. And I got my first oh, wow. like legit job from one of the lawyers there. They hired me because they had a spot in their mm-hmm. firm. Nice. And that was the beginning of like a poor trajectory out of the pit of like, yeah. you know, whatever, like un- unemployment slash like dead end employment and feeling like, you know, I'll, I've, like thrown, I've made terrible mistakes in my life. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, when you said you went to a detention center in Texas, I was like, wow, this is taking a dark turn. But oh, yeah, no, I wasn't there versus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, your book is doing great now. I still feel like you're kind of a nemesis because the, you know, Merlia the Warlord has, I'm always looking at reviews and you have like 300 reviews and they're super positive. And I barely have a third of that and I'm jealous for sure. So it seems like it's worked out. Uh, yeah, well, I noticed the first one has a lot more reviews than the other two. It has worked out. A lot of those reviews, I got like the the momentum going by like using there's these online like sites where you can put up like an advanced review copy or even like yeah. mm-hmm. supposed to be advanced, but sometimes it's yeah. not really advanced. And then even post advanced. It post advanced. Uh, and I got a lot of reviews that way. Nice. Um, but I guess having it be free really, you know, that's that, that really made a big difference yeah, in terms of getting reviews. Yeah, but, it's hard to argue with free. Like, so yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. But I, when I did the the release for book three in my series last month, when I felt that you were my nemesis, I was like putting a bunch of marketing and stuff behind my book and it was free for five days to like get it up to the top of the charts. And you were just like hanging out there naturally, I think not doing anything. That's just what your book does all the time. And I was like, who is this Morgan? Cole? Oh no, I can make you feel a lot better. Actually last year I like took a hiatus. I was doing other stuff and not working on this, um, sort of learning my new job, et cetera. And I, it was, I was only selling like, you know, 10 copies a month. So it was, it was not high up in the charts at all. Uh, yeah. But I, I did like, I went back to promoting it, but it feels like once I have to keep, you know, submitting to the, the I use like a lot of mailing lists to get the yeah. word out, yeah. Um, yeah. stuff like that. Once I let it go, I, it's hard to keep, to keep it self-sustaining. So the answer yeah. is no, it's not naturally. It's, it's like a, it's temporarily there because I recently did a lot of promoting, but it won't be there forever. Well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they were both suffering in this together. Yeah. But, uh, so you worked on this book for 10 years. Uh, it is certifiably good now, finally, when you're done with it and you split it in half. Um, that sounds like it went through a lot of phases. Um, did you, did your original vision for it stay? And like, what, what drove you to tell this story or um, did it change radically in the decade that you were polishing it to where it is? Oh, that's a complicated question. Um, (laughs) It changed a lot, but not as much, not that, not that radically. I think, I mean, the the main beats of the story stayed the same. The ending Mm -hmm. changed pretty significantly in terms Mm of, uh, you know, well, I guess I shouldn't talk about the ending of the whole series, but who who had lived and who died and just like the general climax. I ended up rewriting the climax completely I have like a whole alternate ending, but besides oh, that, cool. oh yeah, that's uh, a freebie on your mailing list, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, 
Um, and, but I, I, I just, I don't remember where I even got the idea from after all this time. It just sort of was a co several things coalesced. I, I, I think part of it came from like a conversation I had with my brother where we were, were like arguing about Star Wars of all things. And we were like <laughs> debating the Star Wars prequels. And like, we like, uh, we just, yeah. we sort of came to this conclusion that like they had a good story, but it wasn't told particularly artfully and that like you know the dialogue and the yeah. uh, you know, some questionable choices there yeah so then i was like part of it came about as like you can't really tell from the first book so much but definitely later in the series it's sort of almost mm -hmm. like was inspired by like this desire to remake those mm. three movies but then obviously it's in a fantasy setting and there were a lot of other influences thrown in I and mean, then that's a laudable that's <laughs> a laudable desire that you have because they need remaking and somewhere along the way, it just transitioned into this story. Like originally, it had a lot of other points of view, and there were. Mm. It was the first book was from the perspective of both the characters, Marilia and her brother. Oh, and it was wow. sort of inspired by this, this whole idea of sibling rivalry and insecurity. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. Some of which I was going through in my life, and then yeah, that's funny. It was a debate with your brother that sparked it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. There's, yeah, <laughs> but um. It sort of just transitioned to me about this. I, I, it took me a long time to get a handle on Marilia's character, actually. Like, I went back and forth about, and then I just sort of, one day I, I started writing and it just came to me. And then, like, she took over the book and it just sort of transitioned to me. Uh, I mean, all the other stuff is still in there, but it's it's much more Marilia focused than originally it was. And I'm I'm glad for that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, she's a character that, that grabbed me right away. Like that, I mean... Your, your prologue like makes you really curious where this book is going because you sort of like jump us to the ending a little bit and we're like, whoa, this is intense. And then we go to somewhere very different. But from the start, like her just being super plucky and growing up in the, I forget what it's called, not a pleasure the, house, but- The pillow house, yeah. <laughs> pillow house, yeah. You know, and like doing Spirit. everything she can to get ahead in her relationship to um, the one-eyed man and like, you know, like just that that game and her wanting to succeed and becoming so singularly focused on it. I just like was totally sold on her character from the start. So um, I yeah, I've had a similar experience. The the main character of my series that was your nemesis for a brief time. Um, Althea? Yeah. Did I say that right? <laughs> uh, I say Alethea, but Alethea, you know okay. like, it's, it's just written. <laughs> There's no right way. But she, I uh, was planning a different book and I was making up side characters for this book and she was one of the side characters and she was just way more interesting than the book I was going to write and then the main character that I was going to write. And I was like, I guess I need to write her story. So I've had that experience too of like finding the character and them like just like taking over. Um, and yeah, it shows it shows in the book because she is so compelling. And Anueth, have I said that right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Nice uh yeah like at least in the beginning he's not a character that would sell me at all you know like yeah. he's like he feels very tangential to her story and maybe being in his head would be different but um well yeah, i feel I, like the crucible in, that the book passed through has has made it into gold because i wouldn't have invited you on if i wasn't into it that's like that's my promise when i interview people is i don't i don't interview authors whose books i don't personally like <laughs> so I feel like that's a safe policy. <laughs> uh, very reasonable. Um, yeah. In terms of anyway, like I, I move. You still will get if you if you do read the rest of the books. You will, I can promise you, you'll get to go inside his head. But of course, Marilia still stays. Yeah. She's like the main main character, and then yeah. but yeah, there's a lot more of him in the other books, and he's quite a troubled character to say the least. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, before we go, can you tell me a little bit on uh, how you designed? the the initial setting i forget the name of the city but it's so rich and like the lore of the hills and the colors and the winds and like all these things are like it's i love world building like that's how i came to fantasy and it's another thing that sold me on the books i was like this feels so real like did that all come slowly over revision or did you like geek out and make a world bible before you started or like how did you make that world as rich as it is it's actually funny because I, I actually don't like world building. Like it stresses really? me out. It's funny. Well, you're like, good I, at it. I, I think, it, it, I, I don't know if I'm good at it or if I had the virtue of having 10 years in which it's slowly yeah. called, like more and more mm -hmm. things built up. Uh, yeah. I did a lot of like research, like into mm -hmm. 
like historical research for, for at least yeah. the battle strategies and some of the stuff about the the bravo where she grows up and like yeah as much as i could and then i i a lot of it then i ended up not using and sort of just mm. uh it was like a weird blend of like ancient rome which i knew a decent amount about at the time mm. less so now um mm. there's this game that i played when i was very young that like was a formative experience so like i played it mm. during a sort of dark time in my life when i was mm -hmm. uh you know i tend to be sort of a socially anxious person so at the time i was pretty isolated and unhappy and it was this game it was like the predecessor to skyrim called morrowind and like a lot of influences there like some of just the memories i had the the feelings of like you know some of the the names and the 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 religious aspects of the, the story were inspired by that and so then i just sort of meshed them together and mm. ended up with what i ended up with and <laughs> That's cool. I mean, it feels it feels rich and and unique. I feel like that makes sense to me. I hear a lot of times that creativity is like the merging of two uh, unlike things, you know, like taking things and um, yeah, and making something new out of them. And because I like it didn't feel derivative of anything. And I've read lots of fantasy books and I definitely know when people have phoned in their world building or their characters or whatever. And it didn't feel like that to me. Um, Thanks. Good work. <laughs> um, I think that we should call it for here to not let the podcast go on too long, but you're going to come back for another episode in a couple of weeks. Yeah, certainly. Cool. Um, well, until then, uh, where would you recommend that people start? I know that you've got a free novella for people who sign up to your mailing list, but you also have a free book on Amazon. So where would you recommend that people start with your stuff and where can they find it online? So, uh, I mean, yeah, I, Merlia the Warlord, probably the best place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, right there on Amazon, it's free, so that's the bonus. I have another novel that's sort of, in some ways, the first novel. I I wrote them almost concurrently. Like, as I was writing a draft of Merlia, I was also writing a draft of this book, and then, like, I would alternate between drafts. I think Merlia was finished first, but mm -hmm. they were sort of written concurrently. It's called The Queen of Wind and Sunlight, which is sort of a more mm -hmm. straightforward adventure story. Mm -hmm. Which ironically, now that The Last of Us just came out on HBO, it's actually very similar to that. Oh, wow. Um, well, not not cool. necessarily by design, but all. Yeah, exactly. I'll ride those coattails. What a happy coincidence. <laughs> You'd be like, so, I was there before Last of Us. I mean, there's no zombies, but it's like a, you know, the grizzled road trip with a few people who can't get along with each other and, you know, the father nice. daughter relationship. So that that's there. Well, um, I haven't started reading that one, but as mentioned before we started recording, the the cover just tells me I want to read this. It's so beautiful. I love these cover designers. Like I, yeah, I, um, wildly talented people that put our put our imaginations into visual form. For sure, for sure. Okay, so there'll be a link to to um, book one in the in the show notes, and if you're just listening and can't see those, just put in M A R I L I A, um, and it's basically the first like search result that comes up on Amazon and it's free. So, and it comes highly recommended by me. This is an excellent book. I invited him on because uh, I liked it so much and wanted to talk about it. So hopefully we'll do that more next time for this time. Thanks for coming on uh, and we'll chat again soon. Thank you. For more information on Levi Jacobs and his books, including the award-winning Tide Collar Chronicles, visit www.levijacobs.com. Or for a free audiobook, only available to podcast listeners, go to www.levijacobs.com slash free. Thanks for listening, and read on.